What's up everyone, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I'm gonna start this video by thanking you for joining me. If you haven't subscribed, I'd be so honored if you would consider. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. Today we are back with vacuums, one of my favorite categories. This is the brand new Shark AI robotic vacuum. Now I'm gonna read this because I know there's so many different variants, this is the newest, and how it's described right off Shark's website, Shark AI Ultra Robot Vacuum with XL HEPA, self-empty base, bagless, 60-day capacity, LiDAR navigation, ultra clean, smart home mapping, and perfect for pet hair. Model number RV2502AE. Now I felt it was important because there is so many different models and they sort of look the same, but really you want to get something with LiDAR. LiDAR is its ability to sense the environment around it and based off of that ability, perhaps not run into things and damage them, suck up things that you don't want it to, so on and so forth. But I'm really excited about this. We're going to unbox it, go through setup, and I will give you my honest review. And again, this video is not to sell you anything, just educate you and find out if it's worth your hard earned money. I can't wait to get started, let's do this. Before we begin with the unboxing, we're gonna go over the features and we're gonna do that because the box so nicely presents them for us. Starting on the back side of the box, first thing I wanna talk about is the AI laser navigation. This is actually an advanced LiDAR technology. What that means for you is, is it will actually detect something like a shoe in the way and it will go around it. It also gives it the ability to do your carpet or floor row by row. This is something that many, many robotic vacuums cannot do. So that is a great feature to have. Of course, we have the cliff sensors that keeps it from falling off. If you have like a sunken in living room like I do, you have dual side brushes. It says spinning side brushes pull in debris from the edges and corners. Now, everything about this really screams quality, especially when you talk about these specifics to technology it's really loaded and for the price compared to what you get from some other brands you really do get it all here for a pretty decent price considering comparisons now we're looking at the front here you can see we have ultra clean mode for targeted deep cleaning 30 percent better carpet cleaning more suction than the irobot and rumba i7 enhanced edge cleaning plus pet hair pickup this is great for single rooms, high traffic zones, and precise spots. Anti-allergen complete seal for a true HEPA bagless. That means you do not have to purchase bags for your um, base there. And then it captures 99.97 of the dust and allergens. You have precision, precision excuse me, home mapping that you can use with the app. We'll look at that. Of course, you can use um, any of your favorite assistants like Alexa or Google to start it. So let's get this opened up. Make sure that it's on a level surface or your vacuum will fall out. Just warning you, it's a little different. This sort of just opens and we're greeted with our products. Now, if you watch my channel, you know I love a good presentation. As soon as we open it up, actually, sorry, this was caught in there, but you can see we have our quick start guide. Cleaning now begins with the Shark Clean app. So you can actually scan that QR code or download it from Google or the Apple store. So go ahead and do that now. Let's continue. First thing you should notice is that the side brushes are in a little orange bag. Don't lose those. We'll go ahead and pull out the vacuum. Just gonna keep digging here and the base is gonna be at the very back. Let's go ahead and pull that out. So now we got the base out. First thing I notice, it is a pretty good size. I mean, it's not little by any means. As a comparison, you can kind of see the box is obviously way bigger than the product itself. Here on the side, we have our filter access, really easy to get to. 
go ahead pop it open this again is a reusable filter pop it out wash it dry it put it back in lock this down and you're ready to go when it's time to clean out the dustbin simply press the button it's going to pop out slide it out empty it put it back in make sure it's locked and you're ready to go again nice feature uh, you can rinse it out and you do not have to use any sort of bags that you have to purchase top is pretty straightforward we have our dustbin um, ejector or release button if you would um, again once it's plugged in we'll have our power base indicator our charging and then of course when we're emptying out our vacuum it will also let us know which it makes a pretty loud noise so you'll know when it's happening anyway on the left side we have some beautiful shark branding quick look at the back side it's all pretty nice looking it's gonna be against the wall anyway but overall the presentation is pretty simple but it's nice Again, down at the bottom, power button, power cord, and the power cord, by the way, is not removable, so it's already built in. Also wanted to let you know, down at the bottom, we have some more filtration. To clean that out, simply press. As you can see, it just opens. All you gotta do, take it out, clean it, put it back in, replace it, whatever you wanna do, and you're ready to go. Another nice feature about this is they do give you this window so you can see when it's full. So you don't have to keep opening it and guessing. You'll know when it's getting full, pull it out, dump it out. Then again, you can kind of see where it, it latches on and everything goes, all the debris goes into um, the filtration system and then empties into this bin and then you dump it out. Again, we have our little charging contacts, but another nice feature I like is it has these divots now that helps when your vacuum is coming back that it gets to its spot and it locks in i've owned many other units that are just flat and it kind of you know wobbles around and sometimes it has to back up and go back and forth until it gets it right this one seems to do it the first time every time so now we are looking at the bottom side of the robot vacuum want to take a moment to make a quick note this and this of course are not part of the vacuum i'm just covering up my serial and mac id numbers okay moving on we have two rotating edge brushes if you would here we have our pivotal wheel that's to help it turn with ease and then you can see the two main wheels here they have a nice shock system built in nice and smooth should be able to get over any surface with ease different kinds of rugs or flooring now we also have our sensors here on the bottom we have sensors here and then we have sensors on each side of the wheels down at the bottom we have our contact pads for charging this is what you need to make sure is aligned when you are charging and that way it will actually charge and not just sit there all night here of course we have the main brush nice and silky smooth feeling um, honestly it doesn't feel like any vacuum brush that i have felt before but you do see a variation of a brush and then you have that sort of rubber and then we have this metal piece here which i believe is how they keep it from getting anything tangled on the brush but of course only time will tell we also have the bumper here. Now, if I push in on this bumper, you'll be able to see, and it'll probably start talking to me. But here you can see, this is how it knows if it runs into anything. All right, now we're looking at the top. Here we have our AI, AI excuse me, laser navigation center. We have our clean button, our dock button. Again, you can see that bumper. You probably want to take most of this plastic off i'll probably leave some of it i'm ocd and like to keep the top clean but make sure all the sensors do not have plastic on it so you get it to function properly and then of course you could see back here definitely want to get the plastic off right there then on the front here by the dock and clean button you will have light up indicator lights for your wi-fi and then you'll also know when it's charging we'll take a look at the dock that also has you know light indicators on there but overall so far feels well built it's it's got good weight but it's not too heavy and it does look pretty cool and i love this 
you know, AI laser navigation center here. Just very futuristic, and I like that it's above everything so you know that it can get a good view and hopefully give us better performance as far as running into things or not running into things and sucking up things that it shouldn't. Let's move on. Just doing a quick look at the brightness level of the indicator lights. Of course, these rings light up also. I'll press this real quick. You'll see it light up. Also a quick look at the top indicator lights on top of the dock base. Now we are going to go through the tech setup portion. Now, if you are one of those people that are not tech savvy, I still encourage you to use the Shark Clean app. You will miss out on a lot of cool features if you don't, and it really is easy to use and do, and we're gonna go through it step by step. First, grab your mobile device like I have my phone here. This is the app you're gonna install. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to the Wi-Fi network on your phone. Make sure that you are connected to the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi only. For those of you that don't know, usually you have two different bands on your router. You have a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz. Since this is only compatible with the 2.4, if you're trying it with a five gigahertz, it won't work. So make sure you're connected and also make sure that the little box is checked to auto reconnect. Now go ahead and install the app. Now that the app is installed, first thing you will do is pick your country. I'm in the United States. You can either hit agree or you can click the box here and help shark improve. That's up to you. Now you need an account. If you already have an account, you'll notice it says sign into my account down here. But if not, go ahead and put in your email address. Go ahead and put in your password. Again, if you miss the opportunity, you can sign into your account. Now we're ready to begin. So it says, let's get your shark ready to start cleaning. Make sure your phone, like I said before, is connected to your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, that you know your network password. And again, a few things that you need to make sure on your phone, make sure it's set to auto reconnect to your 2.4 gigahertz so it doesn't try to connect to your five, as well as knowing your password and also shutting off your phone service signal helps it not get confused. So you can actually just shut off your data only through your carrier, not through your home, and then go ahead and hit get started. It's gonna ask you, which one do you have? We do have the tank, hit yes. Now, in order to continue, we have to attach the brushes. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. As you can see the shape there, if I can get that close for you there, you're going to want to snap one on each side and then during setup in the app, it's going to ask you to do that. So go ahead and do that now. Again, really simple. Just line it up and then push until it snaps down into place. As you can see, it snapped down into place. Then do the next one. Just give it a nice check. Make sure that it doesn't pull off and you're ready to go. Just have been attached. Now it's time to move on. This portion is very important. As you can see, it shows you a little photo here of how exactly you need to have this positioned. So next, let's find a permanent home for your shark. Number one, on a hard surface or low pile carpet. Number two, wall with three feet of space on each side. And then we need five feet of clearance in front and make sure that it's in an area of the home where your Wi-Fi signal is strong then hit continue. Next, we're gonna turn on the power switch at the back of the base. Remember, the I is the on position. Now we're gonna take a look at the base power indicator. The base power indicator icon on the top right side of the base will illuminate confirming that the base is plugged into a power outlet and ready to go. Go ahead and press my dock is ready. Now we're going to grab the actual robot vacuum, gently place your shark on the dock, and the charging indicator should highlight. Once you can see that light, go ahead and click. I can see the lights. Now it's time to connect to Wi-Fi. 
At the same time, you're going to physically press and hold both buttons on the front of your Shark Vacuum. As you can see, it says press dock and clean or dock and max, depending on your robot, until your Shark prompts you, audio and its Wi-Fi indicator begins to blink. Now you know it's time to connect, hit continue. First thing it's gonna do is ask for your location. You must allow this. Now you're going to see your shark pop up. Go ahead and click the box and hit confirm. Next down at the bottom, you're going to see your shark. Go ahead and click where my finger is. Now you're gonna be able to see your Wi-Fi signal. Go ahead and click your 2.4 gigahertz. Go ahead and input the password to your Wi-Fi. Now it's going to go through three stages. It's going to connect the shark to the Wi-Fi, completing connection and verifying connection. Essentially what's going to happen is the vacuum is going to connect to your phone. Then your phone is going to connect your vacuum to the Wi-Fi network. You're going to see that your phone will disconnect from Wi-Fi and reconnect. Just let it, let it do its thing. Don't start messing with your Wi-Fi in the middle of it or it will mess everything up. I also recommend being near your vacuum and of course, close enough to your router that you're getting a good, strong signal. Once everything is done, you should get the success. Your shark is connected. Go ahead and press continue. Then it's gonna be time to get your vacuum ready. And this is more or less, your vacuum will scan your home to give you the options to pick and choose where you want it to vacuum and so that it just knows the layout. You must do this to maximize your experience. First, Shark Vacuum will explore and create a map of your home. Once it's complete, customize your map and start using Smart Cleaning. This will take 20 to 45 minutes. To start, first you're going to have to press each option. Open all doors to areas you'd like to clean, you must check it. Clear obstacles such as wires so that the shark doesn't, you know, basically suck them up. So as you can see, I have everything clicked here. Clear obstacles such as wires so your shark doesn't get. And then down here, what's going to happen is got it, start exploring, will highlight as so. So go ahead and click. Next, your vacuum actually talks and you want to pick the correct language. So what language would you like your shark vacuum to speak? Go ahead and click and then click continue and it will download it. Now we're going to connect it to our Google smart home. Go ahead and open up your Google home app. Go ahead and press the plus sign. Or if you're lucky enough for the connect shark clean to pop up, you can go ahead and click that. If you had to press the plus, Go ahead and type in shark. You'll see that shark clean pops up. Go ahead and click. And then it's going to take you to link it to your account. Remember, whatever assistant you want to use, you must do this or you will not be able to use the voice activation feature. As you can see, it wants to link my Google to my shark. Again, you can do this with Alexa. Go ahead and hit continue. It's going to take you to the shark website. We already signed up for our account or you have one. You would use the same email and password. Again, this is your shark account at this point, not your Google account, excuse me, and then press sign in. You're going to get this little window here. It's going to ask you to authorize. Go ahead and hit authorize. You're going to get the linking your shark account again. Now it's linked. It's going to say add home device. You're going to see your shark vacuum. Go ahead and click the icon and then hit add to a room and put it in whatever room you'd like. Again, they have Google's list. Alexa has their list. Pick whatever you'd like. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you want to designate so that you use that voice control. Once that's complete, it'll be check marked and you'll see device was moved. Now, once you're done, you should be able to see it. I just have mine downstairs. You can see my shark vacuum is currently stopped. You can start it with touch. You can start it with voice. Um, either way, it makes it really easy to use. And this is a really cool feature. And I definitely recommend using either Alexa or Google. Now let's go ahead and jump into the review portion. 
Now, there's several things that I think about when I rate a good robotic vacuum. Let's talk about each of those things. First, overall usability, meaning out of all the features, is it user friendly and is everybody going to be able to take advantage? I have to say from the setup to the shark app experience, being able to use your AI assistant to start it, everything is very easily achieved. And I believe that everyone would be able to use these features, young and old, tech savvy or not. So that is something that shark has done a great job with. The next thing is price based off of the features we get. So let's talk about that. When you compare feature to feature of the shark AI robot to some other big brands, literally in most cases, you're paying half of the amount you would pay in another brand and getting all the features and maybe even more. So Shark has done a great job of giving you the best performance and features for your dollar. The next thing is the ability to clean and do it well, problem free, as well as maintaining a good battery life. So let's talk about that. We got three different speeds for the vacuum as far as suction goes. Let's be honest. First is sort of an eco mode. It's to me worthless, what's the point? You are looking at always using standard or you have basically what would be like a max suction. The max suction, if I was to say, would be one pass and it's gonna suck up everything in its way. And the standard would be most of the time it sucks up everything the first time, but sometimes it takes that other pass. But remember, regardless of the mode you use, this has almost every time eventually picked up everything. So battery life, I get a good solid 90 minutes on standard mode. Now, when I'm in max, it varies. It hasn't been the same, not even once. 60 to 75 minutes is what I've gotten max. But I have to say that's pretty impressive compared to what I've been dealing with. And I've tried probably about 12 different robotic vacuums, all high end. And so far, this is by far the best. Now, the next thing is build quality. Now, build quality is a little bit different for vacuums. And let me explain. When you open a new vacuum, it's beautiful. It's shiny, it's new. It doesn't take long for your vacuum to look like it's five years old. Dusty, scraped up, you know, all the above. It's cleaning. But now this has been used for, I don't know, a month and a half, two months. There is some scuffs, but overall, it's still in great quality. And I usually leave all the plastic on, but since I was gonna do this demo video for you, I didn't. But the brush itself, if you can see this, still looks brand new. And all of the brushes that are built in, the tires and everything, I mean, they all look pretty darn new. So build quality, I have to say, I'd give it a 10, because again, it's got good weight to it, but it's not overly heavy and it looks good and it cleans well. The dock system. Now, this is something that whether you have a dock that you know sucks all the debris out for you or not, it's something that makes and breaks a robotic vacuum. They all have return to dock functions. The problem is most of them never find the dock. They get stuck under the couch, stuck behind a wall, stuck behind something, the battery runs out and it's dead. I can honestly say 95% of the time it finds the dock. Now, one of the coolest features is the ability for your shark vacuum to drive around your home, map your home out with its LiDAR detection, and this one lets it know how many rooms, where the rooms are, how big the rooms, what's the cleaning area, and this gives you the ability to make sure your vacuum cleans or doesn't clean particular areas. Now, the more you use the vacuum, the better it gets. And I will say, when it comes to that, it's been the best that I have used to date. 
Now, that doesn't mean that there's no problems. Now, let's talk about problems. The first problem that you're gonna run into is clogs. This is something for me that's happened five to 10% of the time, depending on if my kids are home when it's happening or when it's vacuuming. Now, what will happen is you'll get, you know, a clogged error, error, excuse me, will be sent to your phone or something around that category. You'll have to go to the vacuum, maybe grab your vacuum, suck all the debris out, pull the stick or plastic out, and you're back to running. But other than that, we're all good. The second thing that can happen to you is the brushes that spin on the front. If you have any, you know, decorative blankets, like my wife has them all over the house, it gets stuck a lot because it's spinning this way and it's getting really close to the edge and all of a sudden it's just twisting itself up. All of a sudden your vacuum's stuck and you get an error. So this is not a perfect vacuum and honestly, I don't know that there ever will be a perfect robotic vacuum, but as far as from when I first owned my first robotic vacuum to now, they've come a long way to the point where you can use this as your home's vacuum unless you have stairs. Now, overall, this vacuum has exceeded my expectation. I feel like the price point is right for the features, like I said before. The LiDAR, which, you know, stops it from running into your shoes and all of that good stuff works great. But I wanted to talk about that because there is still one problem that I have yet to try a robotic vacuum and it doesn't do this. If you have any kind of, again, piece of plastic, shoelace, string, rope, and it's weird because you would think you don't have this stuff on the ground, but I have a dog and a cat and we do all the time. It will suck it up and it will, you, you will have to go and get it out. It won't be something that it takes care of itself. You know, it does keep the hair out. As I showed you, the brush looks brand new. But as far as that goes, the, the, the LiDAR has not helped, in my opinion, with strings and shoelaces and that nonsense on the ground whatsoever. But other objects, your animal, the pet bowl, this thing gets right up to those edges and it doesn't touch them and it gets really nice and clean all around. All in all, eight out of 10, two points deducted. One, I still think they need to get just a little bit better of detecting stuff on the floor. And two, suction and battery life can always be better. Let's be honest with each other. I mean, it's just something that can always get better. But I highly recommend it. And if I'm being 100% honest with you right now, right now, today, this is my favorite robotic vacuum and my number one recommended robotic vacuum. In this part of the demonstration, I wanted to let you see the Shark Robot Vac dock itself. Also, I wanted you to listen for the noise level of the vacuum itself, as well as once the vacuum docks and it begins to empty the debris into the dustbin. Let's begin. I'm gonna go ahead and press the dock button. You can hear it running with the brushes. putting itself into perfect position for those contacts to touch. Now it's docked. It will begin to empty. You can see that the dust is showing. So as you just heard, it does get pretty loud. That is something to keep in mind if you are wanting to run this at night. Anytime we purchase a product like this, I truly believe that we're looking for a maintenance-free, something that's very easy, and it does the job for us. However, no matter how good these get, they will always need maintenance. One of the most important things to make sure that you're maximizing its potential is to make sure that there is no clogs and that your filters are clean. 
The Shark vacuum itself has a built-in filter by the dust tray or debris tray. All you gotta do is clip together and then here you see our dustbin. Now I've been using this and I wanted to show you. Here we have some of the debris. Now this is a pretty small area, likely because it needs a good seal to suck out the debris when it goes to the base. However, any kind of plastic or sticks or anything like a toothpick can cause this to really lack performance. You wanna always pull this out, not always, but every now and then give it a good look. I grab a vacuum, suck it out, get it all nice and clean. Now the filter itself is also gonna need to be cleaned and maintained, that's easily achieved and then just slides out and in. But there's another thing here. As you can see, it says pinch. So when I pinch and we lift, you're gonna notice that there's another sort of, I don't know, filter or net if you would. I take a vacuum and I suck this out. Anytime this is clogged, you're not gonna have as good as suction. You also get a good look at all the debris. So just make sure that you get all the debris out you keep your filters clean, and this thing should give you great performance. That pretty much concludes my review on the all new Shark AI XL Robotic Vacuum. This is definitely a product I recommend. Just remember, not everything's perfect. There will be a few kinks to work out, and the more you use it, the better it gets. As always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is so short, don't forget to love your family and love your neighbors. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. It's amazing how the smallest acts of kindness can make such a difference. The world is a mess right now and the only people that can change it is you and I. I also want to remind you, I do YouTube for you and you only. I would be so honored if you'd hit that subscribe button. Of course, don't forget to mash that thumbs up. But if you need me, I will try to help you to the best of my ability. You can also come follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic. I'll help you out there if you have questions, but the best place to reach me is definitely in the comments section. I can't wait to see you all in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic, and I'm out. Peace.